Hi everyone, I am here with Samuel today. So Samuel is a friend I've met on Facebook probably, wow, probably six months ago now, Samuel, probably, I don't know, three months ago? I can't yeah, remember. about three or four months. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so Samuel is very, very good with time management skills. And um, it's funny enough because when I did my little time management challenge thing, you know, he obviously popped up. Um, I don't know how it happened, but he popped up and we started talking about things. So I want to invite him today to to talk to the group and about time management, because what I found is that if your time management sucks, then you're going to struggle in your business and you really need as much or as many hours as possible in your business to obviously to be more successful. And this also ties in with pillar one, which is focus. Samuel, hello, how are you doing? Hi, doing awesome, doing great, Joy, how are you? I'm doing very good, thank you. So can you tell the group a little bit about you, who you are, where you come from, and how this whole time management thing comes about, and why did you decide to be in time management? Okay, great. Thank you very much, Joy. Uh, this is Samuel Rosario. I'm from the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. uh, a pretty known country on uh, this side of the world. I don't know, in New Zealand, Australia, I can say that it is, this is a country located in the Caribbean. And mm -hmm. in my case, I'm a general manager. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a life student, lifetime student of everything. And mm -hmm. time management, regarding time management, this thing came six years ago, Joy. Six years ago, I was working in a financial institution and mm -hmm. I was promoted. I guess I was a little smart and I was promoted because of some skills, but I knew nothing about time management productivity. I knew nothing, nothing. And something happened. It actually, it, all, it almost killed me. It almost killed me because uh, I had never, ever been in a situation where I had to be working on many things at the same time. And it was horrible. It, it almost killed me. Uh, in my social media, uh, I show some pictures of me and how I was back then. I was 21 back then. And yeah. I looked like I was 40. I was, it was wow. horrible. And wow. that led me to study and learn and go deeply on time management. I've been studying this subject for six years. And now I am helping entrepreneurs from all over the world, um, time management, productivity, and helping entrepreneurs organize. Yes. Now, when you say it almost killed you, I know exactly what you mean, because I was once um, completely run down where I was so exhausted, I couldn't get out of bed for two days because I was just completely just run down. And it is really that stress of having all these things on your plate and doing so much. You just humanly possible. It's just human beings are just not capable of doing that. Right. In a nutshell. So what is your first time hack that you can tell people? Like, what is the first thing that you can do to save some time in your day? Well, to save some time, the best thing I can I can share with people, there's a lot of things I can share, but one of the best uh, uh, strategies that I can share is what I call the declaration technique, open declaration technique. It is that you do your to-do list, what people call to-do list, and you do it, and you share with two, three people you, uh, you trust and you admire, you mm -hmm. share with them and you say something like, hey, follow up with me at six or seven at five and tell me what's going on with this, what happened with this. You're going to see that your productivity, your focus is going to go up 50 times, 50% uh, sorry, or 100%. So it's amazing. Um, it, it's interesting that you say that because when I was studying all this time management techniques and so on, um, one of the things that, you know, came up was exactly that. It's just that accountability. And I interviewed a guy called TG about six months ago or so. And uh, the funny thing is he has a virtual assistant and it is actually on the interview that we talked about that, that checks in with him to make sure that he's done those tasks. So it's very key to actually have that. And he's incredible with what he does and he's very successful and he's very structured because he's got that accountability person that checks in with him to make sure that he's doing these tasks. So it's interesting that you're saying that. Okay, so what has been like, okay, so we've got some people here, we've got Nandia and, and Marta that's on here. Um, as well. Hi, guys. So what is Great. the thing? Okay, let me ask you this, Samuel. How do you, how's your day structured? Like, you know, from the morning you wake up, the night, you know, till you go to bed. How is your day structured to actually make sure that you get all your tasks done for the day? 
Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, I get up, I wake up really early in the morning, 5, 5.30. And well, I follow this, I follow this, um, this philosophy, uh, Joy, this philosophy mm -hmm. of don't start your day until you have it finished. Don't start your day until you have it finished. And it means when you're going to build, when, you, when there's a construction, you're going to build something. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't start that project until you have the design and the budget and all that. You don't start the project until you have that. Or maybe uh, you guys uh, love uh, rugby in New Zealand. Uh, yeah. We know that the coach don't start the king uh, without having a plan, a strategy to face the other team. And same thing happens for a day. I mean, what I do, I don't, I never ever start a day without planning. But I've got a question for you. So you say you make a priority list, right? How long is this priority list that you make? Okay, it's a great question. It's a great question because we got to simplify. We got to be able to simplify things that we're gonna do. Uh, what I do is uh, I follow the A B C D E method. I don't know if you have heard about it. Mm. The A B C D E method, and I I get the A things. My A things are the things that I must do. I must do in that day. The, the B things are things that are maybe I have to do, see things yeah. are, are things that are not that important. And D, that's the key. D things are the things that you delegate. And there's the thing, because maybe you can have a lot of things to do, but yeah. the best strategy you can develop is your, uh, your skill to delegate to people and to become a leader and to be able to delegate, not abdicate, because when you pass something to someone else, and that's it, that's abdicate. But when you are able to delegate, to be clear on what you want that other person to do, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's the best ability. I maybe, to be honest, I, I get a lot of things, maybe 20 things, uh, 19 things, but I delegate 50% of that. Okay. And I take the other 50%. And that's the, one of the best things that leaders, entrepreneurs, and executives they gotta develop. That, yeah. that ability to delegate. Okay. I want to hear the rest of your day though, but I do have a question on this because I find this to be quite important in my day specifically as well. I can't speak for other people, but I only focus on two to three things to do on a daily basis, you know, so the night before I would know exactly, okay, these are the two to three big things that I need to do. Now I'm also talking out of a, a mom point of view because I only have five working hours a day and I only have five working hours a day times four days. So it's not like I have a lot of time in my business. I make these hours up at night, right? But in saying that, I don't work, usually I won't, this last few weeks has been a little bit different, but usually I won't really work at night, you know, because I only have that time because I'm very structured with my time. So my question to you is, do you feel overwhelmed when you have even like, if you have like 15 things on your list and 50% you delegate, you still have like seven and a half or seven or eight things on your list. Don't you feel overwhelmed when you look at that list thing? No, th this is great, this is great. You feel overwhelmed when you have that in your head. Don't yeah. forget that your head is for having ideas, not for holding them. That's when you feel overwhelmed. When you know that you got to do a whole bunch of things and that's in your head, that's the, the yeah, that's the, the sad part. But when you see it uh, on a paper, on a piece of paper or on a computer, uh, I don't yeah. feel overwhelmed. I don't uh, because there's a disability that you got to, developing yourself, which is self-discipline. The open declaration technique that I shared in the beginning, that's awesome. When you know that you, you're gonna have somebody that's gonna ask you how you made it, if, and if yeah. you made it, because that's a problem that we as entrepreneurs have. We don't have anybody uh, supervising us and something like that. Uh, and that's good and on one side and that's bad on the other side. So I don't, I'm, I am overwhelmed if I haven't, in my head yes okay because i find sometimes like even with my two to three things that i do maybe the type of tasks that i do does take a lot of time because i mean it's not like i'm gonna say i'm i'm replying on emails and i'm fixing this problem that problem i guess if it's little menial tasks like that i can do like 15 of them in a day but i think my tasks are quite big things you know one of my tasks takes like two hours to complete Okay, so what is the next what is the next part of your day looking like? So now you start your day, you know exactly what you're doing. The next part of your day is you basically, you know, you have this list of, you know, things mapped out, you delegated your tasks. So what's the next thing in your day that you start doing then? 
Okay, uh, I start with my A thing. And yeah, more, yeah and, and what happens is that my A thing is gonna take me 85% of the time because yeah. and if I, to, if I have to spend my whole day working on my A things, my most important things, uh, it, it is, that's it, is. I mean, it's the way it is. It's the most important thing. So I, I can spend 80% of the time working on my A things and maybe the other person, the, the other 15% is on the other B, C things. Okay. Do you take breaks in a day? And how long do you take breaks for? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We gotta understand, Joy, that we as human beings, we are not designed to work for long hours. After two hours, max, yeah. after two hours, yeah. Yeah, I mean, focus on one thing, uh, our minds start thinking about something else, uh, yeah. very different than what we are working on. So yeah. that's, that is why that it is, it is actually demonstrated that we gotta take breaks everywhere. We, we take our, our cycles. It can be 45 minutes, 10 minutes rest. Mm -hmm. I use 60 minutes and 10 minutes rest. Uh, some, other, some other people use this Pomodoro technique. That's what, what they call it. It is 25 minutes, five minutes. But the thing is that you gotta find your cycle. It depends on the person. Uh, sometimes yeah. it can be 90 minutes and 20 minutes rest. But the thing is that you gotta take that break and you're gonna see that when you take the break and you get back, you're gonna be fresh, you're gonna be more focused. Mm. Because if you stay there for three hours, uh, you're gonna, your mind is it's gonna get lost. Yeah, so even if people will tell you like, oh, I can do this for three hours, in reality, they ch they're cheating themselves because you can't really do that, right? You think that uh, you're doing it, you would actually be more productive if you take breaks, right? Absolutely, absolutely, Joy. Yeah, see, I've got a problem. I can't sit long on my bum. Um, I, I am very fidgety. I've noticed this, like even like this, I have to hold my cup. Um, I actually have a friend, um, and he's in my Facebook group too, Hannes. He said to me that you must be, you must watch it with your hair because you can't play with your hair. It's because I'm fidgety because I'm like, I, I can't sit still. So this is a problem in my life. Um, and I never used to be like this. This is a new thing that I adopted. I don't know where it comes from. But anyway, so, so okay, so tell me a little bit more about <laughs> management thing so I'm an entrepreneur now obviously duh, but I am struggling with having time in my day so you can help people to get two hours back in their day right so what is your hack to give people two hours in their day what is the number one thing that you can say okay guys this is the thing that you do to get two hours in your day what is that thing Okay, okay. Remember that the essence of time management is not exactly that ability of doing a lot of things with, without a reason, without a purpose. Okay. okay. The thing that different, different that makes me different yeah. of many other people that teach, teach time management, and they are good, I respect them. Many good people in the world teaching about time management, that's great. But the thing yeah. that makes me different is that I, fo that I focus joy on that how in alignment are your daily activities with your goals? I invite your audience, your people, I invite them to make this exercise, Joy. And it is yeah. that, let's say that you write down your three big goals in life. You write them down, your three big goals yeah. in life, and you have them there. And then you take, you think about yesterday. Let's say that you think about yesterday. Let's assume that yesterday was not a holiday, was not something like that. Let's assume that yeah. yesterday was a normal day. Yeah. And you write down the whole description. You write down every single activity that you did. You gotta okay. be uh, descriptive. I mean, you gotta write down not something like I woke up, I took breakfast, I went to work, I got back to home. Not that, not that way. You gotta be. I mean, with details. You write down every single activity. Let's say that you got sixty mm -hmm. activities, something like that. And yeah. then you take these 60 activities and you convert those 60 activities with these three goals that you wrote down in the beginning. And yeah. you see how in alignment are your daily activities with your goals. And most people doing this exercise, Joy, they get something like uh, three activities out of, out of 60 or five yeah. or two. And that's the thing. The reason mm -hmm. of time management is to get you to achieve your goals. It's not this thing of, Doing a lot of things without a reason, it's not that. Exactly. And I that's the main thing. 
Yeah, and it's it's interesting because I think I added you to the little group that I did a time management challenge for. This is a while ago. I think I did this in the beginning of this year. I did a little time management. I think it was a 10-day time management. None of you were in the group. I don't even remember how many days I did it. <laughs> but, um, but one of the hacks that I did teach the people in there was basically saying that, um, you know, just be accountable for what you do and write down. So I called it the honesty test because it's just being honest with yourself where you're really spending your time. Because sometimes we do nonsense in the day that you don't need to spend your time on. It's just like little things, you know, you faff here and you suddenly you, you're you looking for a picture picture on Google and before you know it, you're spending two hours Googling nonsense that you don't need to do. Right? <laughs> like this, this is where it comes in. Like, And that's why I call it the honesty test. It's like be honest with yourself where, where you really spend your time. We have a question. So Nandi is saying, Nandi has had a question. Uh, she says, I feel like I take breaks too often. I can't keep going again i only take break every two to three hours i guess i need more practice what would you recommend for nandi with something like this if she takes a break for you know only a break every two to three hours but then she just doesn't get back into it again what do you recommend they do or what she does I mean, samuel sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah it happens it happens maybe you're taking a break and you take advantage of it and all of a sudden you have taken 40 minutes break or 50 minute breaks yeah it yeah. happens yeah, yeah. First of all, what I have to say is, again, this open declaration technique is key because, again, when you don't have somebody that it, that is supervising us, that is checking on us, it can happen because we are on our own. So use use that, use that that declaration technique. Get someone, two, three, four people that are gonna follow up with you at six p.m., at seven p.m., at five p.m., and you're gonna see that uh, that is called transition time and time management. Those times when you take breaks, when you go to go to take uh, lunch, something like that, mm -hmm. that's transition time. I mean, what you do in those time, if you're taking longer, if you're taking as minimum as possible, mm -hmm. open declaration technique is the best thing here. Yeah. Um, also, now there's something that I did, and something, I don't know if you know about this, but what I did is um, I followed this person called Mal Robbins on YouTube. And she's got this thing called the five second rule. And I've noticed for me that works, but I've also noticed like I know of other people it doesn't work for. But if you sit on your computer, like if you come back from lunch, for example, and you sit in front of your computer, and I'm like, oh, I don't actually know if I want to do this right now. And then you procrastinate, right? Because that's really what it is. You procrastinate because like, okay, I do this rather, I do that rather, I'll do everything else except the task I'm supposed to do. You go five, four, three, two, one, and take a deep breath and just start, just start. And before you know it, you're back into it again. And that is something especially I find when I'm tired when I had like you know long working night and I just I'm just not focused I find like that really works is like the five second rule so maybe Nandi tried it but it doesn't work for everybody so and I mean I've spoken to people it just doesn't work for them I guess okay what I recommend here with that you say Joy is that we gotta find that moment in our day where we are most most productive if we yeah if we Let's say that you're most productive in the mornings. You cannot leave an important project, I don't know, a, a web page that you are creating or a book that you are writing. You cannot leave that task to 4 p.m., to 5 p.m. when you are tired, when you're not focused. Maybe that time is to call people, something like that, make uh, be meetings, things that don't require that energy that you gotta use from here. Yeah. So that's something that I recommend, because if you leave those important activities that require a lot of focus to the mm -hmm. afternoon when you're not that focused, mm -hmm. uh, it's just a mistake. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And just find your just find your oomph. Um, I am not a morning person, Nandi, I don't know about you and who else is on here, but um, I am not a morning person. So for me, it takes literally like two hours, even if I do it at five o'clock or I do it at seven o'clock in the morning, I'm just not a morning person. So, but at night, I am like this, literally, this is me and I can be like this at one o'clock in the morning and I can just work. So I think it's just finding your, you know, absolutely, your group, absolutely. really. I am know? a musician and I know a lot of uh, directors and musician yeah. that the best time to write music to create music is uh, uh, yeah 12 p.m 11 a.m yeah. yeah i know that i see that from musicians all the time yeah yeah i have a friend that does things like that he actually writes podcast um things for for you know about podcast musics and um he's the same he uh, he's best in the middle of the night it's just like his creativity is right there it's quite interesting that right 
Uh, and Nandi's saying, I'm not a morning person either. I do my best to work in the evening. Yeah. And the thing is, like Nandi, for example, she's also, she's a mom of two kids. And kids drain your energy. No offense to the children. We love them. We are moms. But they drain your energy. And it is exhausting, you know. So at night time, you are tired, you know. Bulletproof coffee, Nandi. That's what you need. That's what I do every night. Okay, Sammy, what else can you, I don't want to make this too long. Uh, what else can you give us? Like, what is the one other big tip that you can, you know, as a takeaway tip that people can implement immediately that can help them to start the, or just give them more time back in the day? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, first of all, I have to say, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting mm -hmm. me here. It's an honor to be here with a person like you. Yeah, and I will say it again, our daily activities have to be in alignment with our goals. And time management doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense if yes. you don't align your daily activities with your goals because there should be a, pur a purpose, a reason of why you're doing what you're doing. So right. that's what you gotta do. And I, I, invite, I invite people, your audience to do that, uh, that exercise right now on whenever they have some time because yeah. they're going to see, they're going to see how they're doing it. Because mm. if you don't work on your, on your dreams, how do you expect them to come true? It's not like magic. So yeah. true. That's very true. Yes. So yeah, every single day you got to do something that's going to get you closer to those goals. Yeah. And that's actually because that's why, and I get a lot of people asking me, like, we don't understand the four pillars and I'm working on something that's going to make it clear. But focus is pillar one and focus is not just about focusing on one task. It's about the other part, you know, goals tie in with focus and you, and time management ties in with focus because if you focus at the task at hand, you're going to be focused on the goal. So focus is like a broad thing, in my opinion, anyway, that will help you to achieve your goals. And if you don't spend the time every single day working on your goals, gosh, you're just not going to achieve them. It is just, yeah, it's, so you know, it's not rocket science to figure that out for yourself. Now, Samuel, created really really nice time management course. you want to tell us a little bit about that samuel please yeah it is called time booster academy i invite everybody who's interested to maybe uh you can text me directly and I, i'm gonna be honored to help you to assist you to be on a call and we can talk about your needs so yeah it's time booster academy i am helping entrepreneurs from all over the world to reclaim their time that's the that's our our motto and that's great and i, and I love it because i know what that is i know what frustration, what what you know, anxiety is. So yes. and I oh, I overcame that, and I am helping people to you know to overcome that. Yeah, and it is important because you don't want to end up in hospital being burned out, right? Yeah, uh, so absolutely. Nice to hear your voice, Samuel. Our conversations on Messenger will be so much better now. He <laughs> he, <laughs> it's funny. Okay, cool. We will drop Samuel's links below as well. You know, so you guys can find him. Um, join his Facebook group. And uh, yeah, just check out his, his little course that he's got because it's really is valuable. There's a lot of good things. And we haven't Thank touched you. on all of it in this. I mean, obviously there's a lot more in his course than what we've covered in this um, in this little training slash interview session. Thank you so much. Is there anything Thank else, so to add? Samuel, are you good? I think we've covered about everything. Uh, let me just make sure there's no comments. Um, any questions, anybody? Oh, I, even my husband popped onto this. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Samuel. I really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, well, like I said, we will just post the links in here. And if you guys have any questions, queries, comments, let us know. And remember, I appreciate you. You guys are awesome. All right. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.